In this lecture, I'm going to talk about the things that you should know about this course before you get started with it. And in particular, I'm going to talk about who is this course for and who it isn't for. Then what is it that you're going to learn and why learning those things is important. So let's get started. First of all, who is this course for? I've designed this course specifically for intermediate level makers who are ready to move beyond the multimeter. If you've been working with electronics for the last few years and use the multimeter as your main and perhaps the only test instrument, and you also feel ready to dig deeper and understand what's going on in your circuit over time, then you'll need an oscilloscope. And this course is perfect for you. I've also designed this course for people who want to understand what is an oscilloscope and how it works before they go ahead to purchase one. Oscilloscopes are expensive and it does make sense to have a good grasp of what they do before you go ahead to select and purchase your first one. And finally, I designed this course for people who already have an oscilloscope but are not sure how to use it. Perhaps you got a hand-me-down scope or found a cheap second-hand one on eBay and it was a too good to be true deal to pass. Either way, it's possible that you never got to use it because it seemed too complicated. My goal with this course is that by the end of the course, you'll be able to enjoy using your oscilloscope. And of course, who is this course not for? It's simple. If you don't have a basic grasp of electronics or the various devices that we are using in this course, like the Arduino, then you should take a step back. You should take the time to understand these basic technologies first before you embark in a journey to learn a relatively complicated tool such as the oscilloscope. Now, what are you going to learn by completing this course? This course is comprehensive in the sense that it will teach you the operational aspects that describe oscilloscopes and their use, and then it will help you to apply this new knowledge in a series of experiments so that by the end of the course, you'll be able to use your oscilloscope in your projects. You'll learn the basic concepts that describe the operation and capabilities of an oscilloscope, such as bandwidth, sample rate, and memory size. You'll also learn the different types of oscilloscopes that are available and what you can do and can't do with them. Once you've understood the basics, you move on to learn about the basic functions that are available in all oscilloscopes. These are things like how to display a waveform that is captured from a test signal, how to configure the trigger mechanism, which is a fundamental concept on which you'll get plenty of practice in this course how to measure various attributes of a waveform so that you can learn about the original test signal and how to decode communications between devices. And that's it, and that's quite a lot actually. Now the very important question is, why should you learn all this? After all, the oscilloscope is an advanced test instrument. It's designed to display and measure an electrical signal, most often to represent it as a graph of voltage over time. An instrument like this can help you gain a deeper understanding of electronics and how devices work. Being able to see a capacitor charging or how a PWM signal's duty cycle changes can be a powerful tool in your learning journey. But beyond learning, an oscilloscope is a very useful tool when you work to verify, maintain, and troubleshoot electronic devices. In addition to the multimeter, it gives you the ability to literally probe a circuit and see it working or not working. Over time, as you become more proficient in using it, the oscilloscope will allow you to know exactly what is going on in a circuit instead of just guessing. There are many other test instruments that you can use depending on what kind of technology you are working on. For example, if you are troubleshooting a memory bus, you'll want to use a logic analyzer. And if you're working on radio applications, you'll want to use a spectrum analyzer. But before you get to those more specialized instruments, you should learn how to use the oscilloscope. And that's why you should complete this course.